Earthbound is a rare example of a game made for kids whose message is both complicated and equally relevant to adults. When you first start Earthbound, you think you're in for a quirky, lighthearted RPG about a group of friends getting together to fight evil, in much the same way we all did in our treehouses growing up. Well, that's exactly what it is, but there's a lot more to it than that. That time spent fantasizing about epic battles for justice with your friends always served as a bit of escapism. For some, it was an escape from school. For others, an escape from a bad home, or from this ugly side of the world that a 13-year-old is first starting to become aware of, as they ask themselves why people drink, why some people have nicer houses than others, or why mom and dad look so worried all the time. At the back of every kid's mind, they realize that all of this playing isn't going to last forever, and that at some point they'll have to snap back into facing that reality. In a way, that time we spent on a swing set, or exploring the woods, or playing basketball, or imagining an epic fight against evil was just that, a fight against the injustice of the world. A kid throwing a frisbee to their dog in the backyard is a kid that's choosing to stand in the face of all the cruelty in the world, and saying that it isn't going to stop them from having a bit of fun. Those imaginary monsters that we were shooting at with stick guns acted as a symbol of the varied stresses in a kid's life. Well, that's exactly what Nessa's journey throughout Earthbound is, a play fight against the forces of evil, which may very well be the cause of all the troubles Nessa's faced in life. A father who he only ever talks to on the phone, neighbors that hate his family because of all the money they've borrowed from him, a dog that just doesn't want to play anymore, strange, scary adults acting violently without any explanation that such a young kid can understand. It's around Nessa's age that kids first start to realize that something is seriously wrong with the world. Of course, a kid doesn't understand why. To them, it may as well be some evil entity controlling everything, and making everyone so angry all the time. It may as well be Gygus. As I said, as kids we didn't know what made everyone so angry, but we knew how to fight it, by standing in its face and having fun regardless. We were essentially making fun of the evil in the world. Sure, there might be ruthless gangsters ruling the streets, but what if their leader had a big silly robot that fought for him? Sure, our neighbor's dad might beat his kids, but what if a magical bee from the future just told us we need to save the world? Sure, a prostitute might lead us into a hotel room and try to rob us before putting our unconscious body in a grave, but what if she had a gang of zombies helping her out, and what if a kid in a UFO rescued us? Sure, a gang of cultists might kidnap a young girl, but what if those cultists were called the Happy Happiests, and they wanted to paint everything blue, including the cows? After a long day of play fighting these concepts we can't understand, we're sure to get tired. Well, after all that playing and all those scary adventures, we can always go home, where mom will fix us up some food and we can go to bed and continue where we left off the next day. This dissonance is captured in almost every section of Earthbound. It's not just that these scary scenarios are shown in a lighthearted, innocent way, it's the music, with its harsh contrast between utterly dissonant themes and rhythms and lighthearted fun music with just a hint of unsettling. It's these absolutely crazy battle backgrounds. You'll be fighting a silly little crow that likes to steal your cookies, but you'll be doing so while looking at these utterly psychedelic backgrounds and just plain uncomfortable but strangely compelling music, making the whole thing feel like a bad trip. As kids, we could see just about everything as silly, but we always knew that something was off. The situation wasn't as silly as we like to imagine. Maybe we saw a teacher as a funny-looking mean old lady who never knew how to have fun, but in reality, that teacher might be crying herself to sleep every night over the loss of her husband. Just like us as kids, Ness is having the time of his life fighting all of these silly enemies, but he knows that something is off. This game is an incredible example of just what kind of production value the SNES was capable of supporting. The music is incredible, the gameplay is incredible, the visuals are incredible, and there is so much of it that it leaves my jaw on the floor every time I play. It's an audiovisual treat, however, there are razor blades in those apples. The music, the sprites, the gameplay, the level design, those battle backgrounds, it's all designed to keep you having fun, while making you incredibly uncomfortable, worried, unsure of yourself, and feeling like everything you know is being twisted.
This sentiment could sum up the feeling of hitting your teens perfectly. Hitting your teens is all designed to keep you having fun while making you incredibly uncomfortable, worried, unsure of yourself, and feeling like everything you know is being twisted. However, I'd argue that in spite of us never seeing Ness age past 13, this game is about much more than the feeling of first reaching the age of understanding. This game is all about how, by the time we have to actually deal with the evil in the world, all the play fighting we did against it as kids can actually be our ace in the hole. It's what gives us the emotional fortitude, the understanding, and the willpower to deal with a job, a lack of a father, the fact that some people drink themselves into a stupor every night, and the fact that others kill each other. Crooked politicians, slavery, religious cults, debt, kidnapping, the death of friends. We were aware that these things existed as kids, but all we could do was have fun in spite of it. And we were nothing without our mothers. Now, as adults, we've outgrown those mothers, and we can hopefully take on all these awful parts of the world without needing to go home, eat some of mama's cooking, and go to sleep after a long, hard day of thinking about and dealing with that evil. One thing we should touch on before moving on to adulthood is the 18th birthday, Magicant. After we've reached the eight sanctuary locations, we're transported to Magicant, a country made entirely in Ness's head. Here, we see all the things Ness remembers from his childhood. His favorite snowmen, friends from elementary school, his family, all the enemies he's defeated up until this point in the game. Know how the colors change based on what people in Magicant tell you. The 18th birthday represents a huge intersection on your path. You have no idea where you're going to go in life. Will you be consumed by that evil that you've been made well aware of by this point? Will you stay a child at heart? Will you be the warrior of justice you fantasized about being as a kid? Well, these are all the questions that were at the heart of Ness's mind when he created Magicant. We start out in the light side, where the fights aren't too tough and most of the NPCs are friendly and nice, but eventually we go to the dark side of Magicant. From here on, Ness's ultimate goal is to defeat the Mani Mani statue, the tool Gygus used to brainwash various people in positions of power throughout the game. It's a dark reflection of Ness. It has all the same powers we do, and it uses them furiously. Fortunately, the good side of Ness eventually wins out. He passed the trial of his 18th birthday, and he can proceed forward knowing that he isn't at risk of becoming evil. He's only at risk of being defeated by it. With that confidence, it's time to finish this. You might have noted earlier that I said that almost every part of Earthbound captured that dissonance between fun and scary. Well, there's one section of the game that has no confusion of tone whatsoever. The final section. The preceding parts of this game had this happy-go-lucky, melancholic atmosphere to them, and it was sat right alongside talk of not having really met your father, and plenty of other dark themes. Well, that's all gone in this final section. From here on, this is a straight-up horror game. Let me set the stage in case it's been a while. We have to use the phase distorter to teleport to this strange, otherworldly place to take on Gygus, and we might not be able to come back. Well, after about 30 seconds in this place, a second phase distorter appears, and out pops Dr. Andonus who tells us that Gygus is now attacking Earth in the past. Naturally, this means that we'll have to use his new phase distorter to time travel backwards. The only issue is that biological matter can't time travel. Throughout our entire playthrough, amongst all the dark things we've seen, we've had our character sprites to carry us through. They're always smiling, they wear these cute little outfits, but all that's gone now. Dr. Andonuts has moved the programming of our brains to robotic shells. Thankfully, our character souls can go into the new bodies with them, but save for Ness's hat, which we'll touch on soon, there is absolutely nothing of that happiness remaining in our new character sprites. We push onward and onward through one of the hardest sections of the game. The music is dense and creepy, the enemies are fiercer than ever, our happy looking 13 year old bodies are gone, and it's all downhill from here. This is how it feels to no longer be a minor. Believe me, I know. It's the scariest transition I've ever gone through. While he's still technically only 13, all of that playtime is over. Ness is an adult now. There's no hiding behind silly visualizations of your enemies. They're monsters, and that's all there is to it. Well, as with life, we keep pushing onward until we get to the source of all that evil we saw as a kid, and are living with as adults. We walk forward along this twisted path of entrails strewn before us, and we see it. Gygus. Any hint of tonal ambiguity is gone here. Gygus is the metaphorical reason that there are violent animals, debt, prostitutes, abusive police officers, corrupt politicians, slavery, cultists, kidnappings, alcoholics, gang members, thieves. It's the reason that King doesn't want to play anymore. It's the reason that Tracy had to get a job in spite of being even younger than Ness. It's the reason that you have to defend your mother now instead of the other way around. It's the reason that Pokey ran away and his mom left her husband, and it's the reason why your dad left when you were a kid. Gygus is a perfect metaphor for all of the evil in the world, all of the unfairness and cruelty. 
Unlike Ness, us in the real world can't truly stop evil, but we can learn to live with it and overcome it every day. Well, how do we do that? By calling upon all those experiences we had as a kid. Every time Ness and his friends leveled up, it was metaphorical for Ness thinking about all these evils he's facing in more realistic terms, and gaining more and more willpower to stand up to them. By the time we reach Gygus, we just need to call upon that experience and we can defeat it. In the real world, we call upon our understanding and philosophy that we accumulated as we grew up, and that's how we stand against the evil. You may spend your early teens wondering how on earth you're going to deal with the pressures of being an adult, but by the time you get there, you realize that you already learned how to deal with it. This is why Ness gets to keep his hat when in his new robot body. That simple red hat was with him throughout his entire childhood, and over this entire journey. It's a simple, mute reminder of the things he's learned throughout the game. He learned that evil is a very real thing, and that it can only be withstood using willpower and experience. That's what the hat is, Ness's life experience. As powerful and relatable as this game is to a 13-year-old kid, having just played through it again at an especially transitory time in my life, it's as relevant to me as ever. I won't get into personal matters today, but I'm finally taking my first major steps towards genuine adulthood right now, albeit a couple years too late. And this game reminded me of one simple thing. Adulthood is a scary, scary thing, but my childhood has already taught me to deal with whatever life might throw at me. I didn't think I was ready to become an adult at 18, but I was, just as much as I am now. Thanks to years of slowly understanding more and more about what's wrong with this world, I've learned how to deal with it and live with it, and not let it overtake me. It's a battle against Gygus that adults have to play out every day, but we already know how to take it on. In reality, it never stood a chance.